Hey guys, so I noticed that only a small percentage of the people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. Uh, so if you like my content, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications to make sure that my content gets to you on time. Hey guys, uh, today I want to talk about learning how to econ. So this guide is probably my most requested guide of all time. So hopefully I can put something out there that beginners and even challenger players can learn from. So how do you econ? Uh, econing is probably the biggest distinguisher from low level players to high level players. And essentially it's actually really simple. So there's two underlying principles you have to understand. The first one is that, okay, well, let's explain the basics. There's three main ways to make gold in TFT. One of them is interest. So for every 10 gold, you make an additional gold. The second one is streaking. You get more gold for continuously winning or continuously losing. And then finally, uh, winning rounds uh, gives you gold. So which is extremely relevant for early game. Okay, so here's the fundamental principle of TFT for Econ. Gold value decreases over the game. Basically, your early game gold is extremely impactful uh, because it gives you a lot of options. You can level to play for win and win streaking. You can make the next interest threshold if by uh, by putting all that Econ towards interest. And then you can also lose streak in order to get more gold. And finally, you can hold pairs to potentially start win streaking at any time that you want. Late game, your gold has almost no options. For example, let's just say you're level 8 with a fully upgraded board. You can't go 9 because it costs a lot, so your gold is essentially worthless. Often, you're level 8 and you have 20 gold left over in the bank. That 20 gold is essentially dead. And even uh, even worst case scenario, you're level 9, you have a fully capped board, then all the extra gold is worth completely nothing. Finally, <clears throat> Um, the reason why gold value decreases is making 10 gold of interest at 2-1 means you're getting 1 gold of interest from 2-1 all the way to the end of the game, so like 20 rounds. Making 10 gold at 5-1 means you're getting interest um, to the end of the game, which is about 5 rounds, right? So basically, all that in summary means that in order to econ, the fundamental principle is to want to start early. So, which is the key to econ, determining whether you're win streaking or you're making interest as soon as possible. So often, as early as stage 2-1, you want to decide whether you're pushing for win streak. In order to determine whether you're pushing for win streak, uh, basically, if you have a really strong board with many 2-star units and many slammable items, you definitely want to play for win streak. If you have no upgraded units and you're, you have no slammable items, then you want to play for lose streak and you want to make interest gold. So sometimes this can happen at 2-2 instead. So maybe at 2-1, your board is middle of strength. Uh, if your 2-1 fight goes well and you win, you want to push win streak. If your 2-1 fight went poorly, you maybe you want to push loose streak. And then something I want to highlight is that win streaking and loose streaking are very easy to play in terms of econ. The hard part about econing that most people struggle with is no streak. Uh, no streak is really difficult. So I'm going to be discussing that uh, later in the guide, but it will be the bulk of the guide. Okay, so the moment you lose your streak, let's just say you were planning to win streak, and in the middle, someone beat you. Consider if you can rebuild streak. So basically, scout the rest of the lobby. If you can win against everyone else besides the person you just lost to, then you can you should rebuild streak and keep trying to win streak. However, if you lose to other people in the lobby, then you should probably play a no streak style. So let's first talk about win streaking and lose streaking. So the basic win streak uh, game plan is just to play really high tempo, level aggressively, slam items, and try to keep your win streak the entire game. If you're a 3 streak or higher, I would aggressively try to keep streak, aggressively try to hold pairs, and aggressively try to level. Obviously, it consists of playing your strongest part every turn, and your na your econ will naturally uh, build up, and you're probably going to be um, playing for first this game. The lose streak game plan is uh, also kind of similar. So basically, you're trying to make every single econ threshold. You're trying to kill as many enemy units as possible. Uh, if you take a lot of bad losses, it's okay. Um, so my previous guide on how to uh, minimize early game damage helps a lot right here. Uh, it's the focus firing guide. And then in general, you want to play cheaper units. So I'll play like one start on carries and one start takes. Okay, so with that out of the way, uh, it's a no streak uh, uh, game plan that's the hardest. So I'm going to dedicate the rest of the guide to talking about no streak and lose streak. So basically, you have no streak. Your econ is in shambles. Already in your mind, you should be playing for top 4, and this is the most common scenario in TFT because um, win streaking and lose streaking is actually super hard and super rare. So how do you handle a no streak game plan in terms of econ? So first off, we need to understand uh, making 10 is the most important uh, interest threshold. 
Making 10 gold means you're more, more likely to make 20, which means to, you're more, more likely to make 30. In general, you should always make 10 after stage 2 carousel. And then afterwards, for the rest of the game, you should never have less than 20 gold from Krugs all, all the way to Raptors. So usually, if um, if you have 20, you should stop rolling. If leveling would um, put you less than 20 gold, you should probably not level. In general, that's a very good rule of thumb to follow. Uh, after Raptors, it's probably okay to roll to zero gold, since that's the point that you're probably all ending and trying to uh, scrape by a top four. Um, the next uh, threshold I want to talk about is the 30 and 40 interest threshold. Um, early game, if you have a streak going on, <laughs> making 30 gold often allows you to make 40 gold, which allows you to make 50 gold. So like, let's just say you're 28 gold, uh, and you have to sell a pair in order to make 30 gold. That's often worth it, because here's the reason. If you have 30 gold, next turn you have 38 gold naturally. If you have a plus 2 streak, if you get plus 2 gold from streak, you'll hit 40, and then next turn you'll hit 50. Similarly, if you have 40, um, if you can make 40 this turn, you have 49. Assuming you get plus 1 gold from streak, you'll have 50 the next turn. Okay, so I want to talk about these two special interest thresholds um, specially, because uh, these come up pretty often in early game. Okay, now the second concept that a lot of people don't really understand is that winning a round is literally free money. Assuming you're, you're in a no-streak playstyle, you should try to win your round. So this is very, very, very common on stage 2-1. So you can't make 10 gold. If you don't level, you'll lose the round. If you do level, you'll win most of rounds. You're not strong enough to win streak. Should you level here? A lot of times, the answer is yes. Because leveling here doesn't cost you money. If you level, you don't lose money. If you don't level, since you can't make 10, you don't gain additional money. The plus one gold um, that you get from leveling and winning is extremely powerful. Because, like I said, early game gold is worth a lot more than late game gold. And then, of course, there's also the other benefits of better shops and HP saved. So I took an example off of a new battle game. So right here, um, you can see his board. It's a two-star Warwick, a Gragas one, and a, a Kha'Zix one. He's not strong enough to win streak, right? However, here, Nubao levels to put in the second Gragas, and he ends up winning, and this is one free gold. And keep in mind, if he didn't level, essentially he would have four more gold, which will allow him to buy out his shop, right? Two Sejuani's and a Kled. Uh, but he can't make interest anyways uh, with that five gold. So essentially, um, by leveling here, he gets one free gold. So of course, the similar concept applies for leveling to five, leveling to six, and leveling to seven. Okay. So the next um, no streak game plan, uh, how to econ is committing to a uh, comp early. So let's just say you have both two star Aatrox and two star Gragas. Uh, usually, if you're win streaking, you probably want to play both. That's your strongest board. You want to keep up your win streak. However, if you're on a no streak, you want to commit to either Redeemed or Dawnbringer. So what you want to do is you want to sell one of the two units. I don't care. It doesn't matter which one. So let's just say you sell Aatrox. First off, that's three extra gold you have to either put towards interest or put towards buying pairs. And then second off, you can only focus on buying Dawnbringers for the rest of the game. And basically, um, by not holding um, both Redeemed and Dawnbringer, you have a lot more econ to work with. So that's a really good tip. And then finally, the here's the hardest tip to understand, which is to use less gold for the same strength board. Uh, once again, uh, my past guide on focus firing helps a lot. But in general, this just comes down to Playing 1 cost carries like Ziggs over 3 cost carries like Nocturne because you realize that uh, Ziggs is just as strong as Nocturne and costs 2 less gold. So you can put the extra gold towards Econing or holding pairs. <clears throat> um, you want to hold pairs that are tanks and carries and sell pairs that are utility. For example, in this case, if you have a 2 star uh, Leona and a 2 star Ziggs, that's worth a lot more than 2 star Thresh. The reason why is because Leona is a main tank and Thresh. Whether he's 1 star or 2 star really doesn't make too much of a difference. And then the third tip is uh, hold only hold the pairs for your item holder. Uh, so for example, if you have a Leona with Warmogs, then you should definitely hold a Leona pair because hitting 2 star Leona with Warmogs is a big upgrade. 2 star Leona without Warmogs isn't that important. So in the event that you already have another main tank, maybe you don't want to um, 2 star your Leona. So you can just uh, not hold the pair and sell it for Econ. And then uh, this one's a common mistake as well. So don't hold three cost pairs and you know don't two star three cost units unless they're carries and tanks early game. Since you're not trying to play for win streak, a two stars Lulu is essentially worthless. Never hold it for econ. And there's a lot of other three stars that fall under the same category. So now that we've talked about um, all these tips on how to maximize your econ, I guess the biggest mistake I see uh, people making is 
they have all this econ and they don't know how to use it. Um, I see so many people econ to 50 gold uh, and then have low HP and then for the rest of the game they only use the gold above 50 and then and they never spike, they never get stronger than the rest of the lobby, and then they go 8th. This happens all the time. So this is mostly covered in my tempo guide. You want to probably watch the tempo guide on how to use your gold and convert it into tempo. But in general, uh, the biggest tip is that if you randomly high roll at any point in the game, and you can potentially start win streaking, then use your econ, you know? It doesn't matter whether uh, you're going down from 50 gold all the way down to 20 gold, that's totally fine. Roll for upgrades, level up, um, try to like, you know, try to use your econ and try to push win streak uh, when you randomly high roll. Um, and if you're low HP uh, and you have uh, all that econ, even if you're not high rolling, you should just go ahead and all in. Because let's just say you're like 40 HP or below, at that point, if you keep econing, it's not going to help out too much. You're just randomly going to take a bad fight against someone who like position for you and you're going to die. So if you're low HP, then use all your econ. Um, yeah, so this is all I have for econ -ing. Like I said, this is my uh, most requested guide. So I hope this really helps you guys out. I try to cover a lot of the um, cases that come up commonly in the game. So I want to like, you know, hear what you guys think about it. And then if you guys have any suggestions for future content.